Hey guys, Deval here from ToyWorldOrder.com, wishing you, your family, your friends, and everyone a very happy holidays and a Merry Christmas. This is my gift to all of you, the faithful viewers, the amazing fans, and the wonderful friends that I've made over the years who have clamored and cried and screamed, we want to see your collection of all. Well, this is my gift to all of you. I give you a complete guided tour of the man cave down here, of everything, every shelf, and every toy line. So let's take a look. One of the first things you see as you head down towards the basement are a collection of uh, some, well, some posters. GoBots, The Muppets. I like The Muppets poster. It's one of my favorites. Scroll down here. He-Man, She-Ra, Secret of the Sword. That's actually an original theatrical poster that I've had for I don't know how long. Moving on down towards the uh, Kermit the Frog and Muppet stuff. It's my box. Fisher Price Kermit Frog, pretty cool. Uh, some Palisades Muppets that are still in box. The Tonner Kermit and Piggy, which are really cool. And then as you head down the stairs, you're greeted by this amazing assortment of Palisades Muppets figures. Uh, almost every regular figure in playset, I'm missing the backstage playset, and a couple of regular figures that are really hard to get because they were the tail end, but ah oh well. Head down into the basement, and along the wall there, you see an assortment of animation cells, which are uh, one of the highlights, I think, of the collection, from uh, real Ghostbusters, to Back to the Future, to Alvin and the Chipmunks, to Masters of the Universe, and some key He-Man uh, animation cells and production drawings, as well as She-Ra, She-Ra on Swiftwing, which is pretty cool. She she run Glimmer, uh, and a production drawing of Adora, which is pretty neat. Another She-Ra. I've got quite a few She-Ra ones. They're, they're fun. One of my favorite pieces is this multiple cell and background of Filmation's Ghostbusters, which is pretty cool. And some Brave Star pieces, which were actually picked up for me by my buddy Dave Draper and my buddy Sean Roussel. A production drawing from Raggedy Ann and Andy, which is kind of cool. One of the Filmation cells and production drawings from the uh, Filmation's Pinocchio, which is which is pretty neat. And then, of course, I've got this production drawing here, which is actually from uh, the ALF animated series. Which, And then behind it is a production drawing from the original anime for Sailor Moon of, uh, Sailor, of, of Mina, who was uh, Sailor Venus. And then down here, Carrie and I have figured out a way to start displaying larger stuffed animals with a... Uh, a big wooden curtain rod. It works pretty well. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of them up yet because, well, the curtain rods are kind of expensive. But this gives us gives you and gives us an idea of what needs to be done to display these larger stuffed animals. Next to that is a, uh, a large display shelf of 12-inch figures and assorted figures. Uh, you know, the top has some great stuff. Down below is my Captain Action and Doctor Evil and it's Battle of the Planets V, my Max FX, my Mego Happy Days, my Inspector Gadget, which is one of my favorite pieces. Down below it are the Mattel 12-inch Ghostbusters, all four originals, and the uh, the two Ghostbusters, two gray uniform Ghostbusters, as well as the, the Mego-style real Ghostbusters figures in my Sam Hain, which is kind of neat. And then down on the bottom shelf are a couple of Disney things, which start to lead us into the Disney section itself, which is right next to it. This is some of Carrie and I's favorite stuff, and I think some of Carrie's favorite stuff, because it's it's all little cute stuff, as she likes to say. All little Disney buttons and pins, and all the assorted Disney characters and figurines we have.
And then next to it are just some assorted Disney items, some puzzles which we really like, as well as a boxed light-up drawing desk from the 70s, which is pretty cool, or Walt Disney World Barbie. This awesome fold-away Walt Disney character play world, which we've never seen before and is complete in box. I've got this great Disneyland kind of little uh, tabletop pinball game, which is kind of neat. It's got a little couple cracks and little breaks in it, but it's still in really good shape. Our awesome never used Mickey Mouse rickety bridge game, which is awesome. There's a lot of awesomes in that, sorry. Mickey Mouse puzzle from the 50s, I think, and then some great, great items, including this Mickey Mouse Bambi Thumper and Flower Clock, which uh, I'd never seen before. Then heading over next to it, we've got these great display cabinets, which Carrie got for me a couple years ago for Christmas, which houses the majority of our very rare and very expensive Disney collectibles. As well, of, of course, a few assorted items that aren't quite as rare and as expensive, but they needed a home, so they got, you know, stuck in the cabinets. Some great classic stuffed Mickey and Minis. All from the range of the 50s through the early 80s. Some great Dakin figures. Some of my favorites, which are the Walt Disney World uh, and Disneyland character greeting figures, which are awesome. The Disney Mini Diecast Vehicle playset. Eh, it's pretty cool. Lots of little figures and pieces. And then above that, on the top shelves of both of these cabinets, are collector glasses, which we have quite a few of, including Care Bears, the Complete Mickey's Christmas Carol, some Flintstones glasses, which are really neat. Great Muppet Caper glasses. A lot of display space for all of this stuff. These cases are really big and really, really well done. And the next shelf over, we've got some more Disney stuff, of course. Uh, some Disney ashtrays and some nice collector pieces from the early days of Walt Disney World and Disneyland including this great TV tray from the Disney's World of Color, this great Walt Disney World ashtray and bottle openers, which you'll never see sold in the parks again. And, of course, some collector glasses from the Disney parks, as well as a uh, four set of little mini plates from World Showcase at Epcot. An original Disneyland ticket book with some tickets missing, but an original. And some other various Disney glasses, including a whole collection of uh, Dixie cups for Aladdin when they came out. Up above that, next is our Muppet shelf, is some more Muppet stuff, which is a lot of the earlier stuff, a lot of the Happy Meal toys, um, a lot of the stuffed animals, and just various stuff that we found over the years, including my favorite, a complete set of Fisher Price Muppets, including a couple in package back there. And then, of course, we got some various random, like some Muppets and some Sesame Street and some Looney Tunes babies and stuff. And my favorite, these great uh, kind of ceramic Sesame Street figurines, which we have a whole set of now, which are very, very cool. And then up above, up above that, we've got a couple of various figures and sets, including some more collector glasses that didn't really have a home at the time. Our collector glasses are kind of outgrowing our sections that we had them in. Lots of Smurf glasses. And some more collector glasses up here in Bear Strikes Back, Indiana Jones, some Muppet Babies and Muppets, a complete set of Alvin and the Chipmunks and Chipettes, some awesome Popples glasses. I love the Popples glasses, they're so cool. And some more McDonald Land glasses. On the shelf above that are some boxed items, my Hook Attack Wrap, Chuck Norris Karate Kid Corvette, some Beetlejuice Snake Mask, some awesome Herself the Elf stuff. A few boxed Air Raiders vehicles. 
And one of my favorite GoBot pieces, the GoBot's Turnover Racer, which is a uh, kind of a preschool item from the early 80s. Next to it is I've got a little display case, a Detolf, uh, some random figures up there on top. Most of the Detolf is all My Little Pony, from Vintage to Equestria Girls and more. Next to it starts our talking toy section, my Teddy Buck, um, my Teddy Ruxpin box picture show and answer box. We've got a boxed Little Bopper Goofy, and then going along with the Little Boppers, we've uh, managed to find Donald Duck, and Mickey Mouse, and Baby Piggy, and of course Teddy Ruxpin himself, one of the stuffed Teddy Ruxpins there. TJ Berry Tales, who I, I really like, it's a really great uh, stiff animal, um, scary guy, I can never remember his name, but he's frightening. And then I've got some awesome boxed. I've got Cooler from Pound Puppies and Fievel from American Tales, and those were sold usually in Sears stores in the 80s. And then, of course, my boxed Mangalore Mountain and my only boxed Sky Commander's vehicle I have, which is Flexwing. And then down below it, of course, are the actual talking toys. So you got Teddy and Grubby, as well as an assortment of the different characters from the Teddy Ruxman world, which were all puppets. One of the smaller talking teddies, as well as baby Teddy Ruxpin there. A mother goose and Hector. We've got Mickey Mouse and Goofy. Woodstock and Snoopy. Alf. And of course, my favorite out of the whole collection are the talking trio, Big Bird, Cookie Monster, and Oscar the Grouch, as well as a Tycho Big Bird. So the first three were from Ideal, and this one was from Tycho. And then down below it starts my action figures, so the 2008 NECA Turtles box set, the WCW Evolution of Sting, which is a great, great wrestling box set. My complete collection, minus the phone booth right now, of the Bill and Ted's figures from Kenner. I love this line. It's such a great, kooky little line. I mean, just look at them. Look how awesome they look. I love them. And of course, the two different cassette tapes that were out for the Wild Stallions. Both, uh, both have different tracks on them, which are great. And then moving over next to them is the complete collection of Last Action Hero. Yes, uh, not a great movie, not a great toy line, but Still a neat little collectible line. I love the Last Action Hero line. I think they did a great job with this stuff, and it looks really cool. Next to it starts our Hasbro Cops sections. I've got quite a few cops. Most of them are complete. I love the look of this old line, though. It's great. I had a bunch of these when I was a kid. and never got to have a whole bunch of them. and Luckily, I have been able to find quite a few figures over the past year and a half or so. Buttons McBoom Boom, who's my favorite. And then next to them, I have the pretty much the complete line of visionaries, that, uh, the carded figures anyway. I have all of them complete loose with their weapons and staffs. All the holograms work pretty exceptionally, as you can see here. You can see some of them there. They work pretty well. And I've got a Lancer cycle with Ektar here, who Ektar is complete. Uh, at the time of this filming, I was missing a side panel, but I've since gotten the little side panel I was missing. Thanks to an awesome viewer out there who happened to find one and be like, I have an extra one, you want it? Up top, starting on the shelves, there's my Earthworm Jim uh, pocket rocket, who really didn't have a home right now, but some of my anime stuff, stuff from Trigun, stuff from Love Hina. My Battle of the Planets from Diamond Select, which were an awesome line, but unfortunately very fragile, and some of them have broken arms. And a couple of Final Fantasy characters there. 
down below that starts uh, more of the classic line, Supernaturals, all loose and complete. Uh, I've got some new adventures, He-Man, Flog, uh, some great stuff, my, two different Skeletors, my He-Man is just missing his sword. Loose and complete line of Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves figures. Yeah, I know, another kooky Kenner line, but man, I can't help it. They're just so, so crazy looking. I had to have them. And then, of course, the shelf down below are where all the ghostlings are for Supernaturals, all loose and complete with their weapons. Next to all of them are some Skeleton Warriors, the original releases that I still have from when I was a kid. As well as pretty much the entire collection, minus the blank, of Dick Tracy figures. And I think I'm missing uh, a weapon or two for these figures, but most of them all have everything they came with. And then down below, a couple of assorted smaller characters. Dino Riders, Mask, Bone Age. I got a Lola Bunny from Space Jam. She was my favorite character. Next to them is my video games section, and uh, a lot of these figures are from NECA, and NECA always does a great job with their video game stuff, especially like the Gods of War stuff, that's some of the best stuff, best figures I've ever released. Dante's Inferno, I've got some Dragon's Layer figures which are pretty cool, and down here are my little Connects mini Mario figures, my little Connects figures, and of course my only head pop in Madball, he's still neat though. Down below all that are my Terminator 2 and Terminator 2 Future War figures from Kinner. As well as the awesome Playmates Tailspin line. Most of these are complete. I'm missing a couple weapons and still missing a figure from the line. My loose and complete Darkwing Duck from when I was a kid as well as my Indiana Jones. And a complete collection of Earthworm Jim figures minus the mail away. I love the evil Earthworm Jim. He's so neat looking. As well as some awesome diecast Willow figures. Next shelf are some all the Palisades Micronauts relaunches, and unfortunately these are all really fragile figures that have most of them have shattered, but these are the ones I've managed to save over the years that are still in relatively good shape. And some assorted figure lines from the 80s and 90s. My Wild West Cowboys of Moon Mesa. These figures are neat. And of course, the Toxic Crusaders. And then next to them, just some random assortments, Centurions, some Battletech, Sectars. Next shelf down starts my meager Ninja Turtles collection. Most of these are from when I was a kid. And some random stuff, Mask, Waterworld. Rimco McDonald Land figures, which are such a neat little line. Some more great Kinner line, a, a Robocop. Love the Robocop line, it's so neat. Oh, my complete and loose Adams family line from Playmates. You gotta love the old Kenner Police Academy line. Some Silver Hawks, a Thundercat, a bunch of small soldiers.
And of course, I've got an assortment of real Ghostbusters figures from Kenner, which is one of my favorite things. And they're all displayed on the very awesome and very cool Firehouse playset from Kenner. I've got various Ghostbusters and ghosts stashed inside the Firehouse. And of course, one of my favorite play sets, which is the Savage Strike Headquarters from Rambo. I've got this large entertainment center downstairs, and I've used that instead of putting video games and TVs and stuff on it as a way to display a lot of my toys. So, you know, you've got the big Voltron, uh, Masters Universe, Snake Teela, who I've never opened, uh, Goonies Copper Bone prop replica that I bought at, at San Diego Comic Con one year, uh, some of the awesome Diamond uh, Warner Brothers uh, Looney Tunes figures, and then my, uh, my cool... Uh, What's left of my Tonner dolls, my, my Tonner collection that I had, I had a whole whole bunch more and it came down to space and what I really wanted to collect. So I kept all of my Disney stuff and a few of my DC Universe heroes. Got a little bit of a Kitty Pride shrine right there that's, you know. Next shelf down, I've got, uh, starting on the Entertainment Center, my, my Get Along Gang, my little clubhouse caboose and some figures. And then Defenders of the Earth. I love Defenders of the Earth. That line's great. Uh, all the figures loose and complete. And a couple of the vehicles. It's taken me a while to track down some of the vehicles. So, And of course, uh, Carrie's favorite toy line that I have. Chuck Norris Karate Commandos. I have three of these Corvettes. It's pretty sad. And you know, we've talked about it a lot. It's pretty truthful. I have three of these things. And Carrie cringes every time she sees them. But all the figures, I'm missing a couple accessories for them. The Panache Place Voltron on my Voltron shelf, the Toynami Voltron that came out a few years ago, the, the plastic one, not the die-cast one, the plastic one's much better. And then of course uh, some, of the, some of the different Panache Place characters, some different variations, my Matchbox line, my Voltrons 1, 2, and 3, so Vehicle Lion and Robot Force Voltron. And my, my Vehicle Force, I love it. Some more Looney Tunes stuff. As well as a, a vintage Chipmunks tour van with Dave Seville and the wind-up Chipmunks and two of the wind-up Chipettes. I'm missing a Chipette and one other wind-up who was uh, Uncle Harry, I think. My Swamp Thing collection, I'm missing two figures. I'm missing Climbing Swamp Thing and Tomahawk. But all the vehicles, all the playsets, and all the other figures, uh, loose and complete, I'm missing one weapon. And I'm missing it for that guy right there in orange. I can't remember his name. Missing his little canister. Weed Killer, that's his name. Missing his little canister. And then the shelf below that is my humanoids. Uh, I have pretty much everything in humanoids. I'm missing one of the trees, and I'm missing Liquidator's uh, helmet, his backpack, and his hose. But uh, everything else is here and complete, which is very, very cool. Love this line. The only thing I had from this line was... Uh, I had Decompose as a kid. I used to love Decompose. And this is such a cool line from Hasbro from the 80s. And next to it, the last three shelves here are all vintage My Little Pony G1 playsets and figures all complete. From the show stable to a complete dream castle. Oh, oh shaky. There we go. And then, of course, down below that is the uh, Pretty Parlor with, uh, with Peachy. And then below that is the uh, the cute little uh, My Little Pony uh, baby dance studio. I love it. It's, it's really kind of adorable. Next to it are uh, starting off with some more display shelves. My 2000X series of Master Universe. Uh, pretty much all the regular figures, I think. I don't have any of the variants, but all of the regular figures I have. And most of the vehicles. You know, Slime Pit and some of the other various assortments.
the shelf below that is some randomness, you know, so I've got the Power Rangers Gold and Black Megazord, that was one of the, uh, one of the special editions, my classic Lino, which is the only Bandai Thundercats item I own. Uh, some more mortals down there, and some, uh, the Pink Ranger, the original Pink Ranger, and then my Kinner Aliens line. I, I've only got a few, but I've got some really cool pieces like the the Queen High playset and the Dropship, and uh, some of the other alien figures, and Ripley and Bishop, the Power Loader, some cool stuff. And of course, Doctor John Kent and Toy Finity's Mortals. God, I love the Mortals. I have so many Mortals. So, so many mortals. The shelf below that, I've got uh, a bunch of the Captain Power and the Soldiers of the Future. I have every American release figure uh, loose and complete, which was a chore to track down, especially Tritor. Uh, he was a hard one to find. And then, of course, uh, a number of the vehicles. Uh, Of course, my only two Starcom, Starcom videos, I almost said Starcom, jeez, Starcom vehicles from my buddy Chad Plouffe. And of course, my Sailor Moon shelf, my collection of Sailor Moon stuff I've collected since uh, 94, 95 when the show first premiered. I've been collecting this stuff for a long time, and every time I find something new that I don't have and haven't seen, I, I pick up. Like the, the Gashapons, which were the little, uh, kind of like the bubblegum machine uh, prizes that you could get in Japan. Those are pretty cool. I've got quite a few Gashapons. My stuffed Luna back there. And of course, the awesome SH Figure Arts, uh, Sailor Moon and Sailor Mercury, the first two that are out. So I'm eagerly awaiting Sailor Mars in February. And down below, just a, I've got a few things down here. Some, some Flintstone kids, the Flintstone movie figures, the main characters, and the Flintstone car. And a Jetsons model that I actually put together and painted years ago that that's kind of been floating around my collection for a while. It keeps finding a new home, so this is its home for now. The next shelf starting over is uh, starting with Vintage Master stuff. So I've got a lot of, a lot of the Vintage, a complete Castle Grayskull with uh, the inserts and everything inside there. Uh, of course, the Carrying Case and the Fright Zone, which I'm still missing a clip for the side of the Fright Zone. So if anyone has an extra clip out there, let me know. Some of the figures, most of my figures are all loose and complete. I'm missing weapons for a few of them here and there, but most of the main characters are all complete. My sealed Masters trading cards. I have a He-Man and a Skeletor on each side. It's pretty cool. Yeah, there's the Skeletor. My, my Body Wars. I've got two of these, actually. Come from a, a buddy of mine, Chad Plouffe, sent me these. and These are really, really cool little mini play sets. Uh, never seen them before until he sent them to me, and I was like, these are really neat. One of the prizes of my collection, a complete uh, Filmation Ghostbusters line of the figures in um, pretty much all the vehicles and playsets. I'm missing the Ghost Command playset. I'm currently trying to get my hands on one, but I have everything else from this line. All the figures, all the accessories, uh, all the vehicles, the, the place that the Bone Trailer there is all complete. It's, it's such a fun little line and one that doesn't get enough love, but man, I love Filmation Ghostbusters stuff. The, the toy line is one of my favorites of all times. I had such a connection to it when I was a kid. Down below it are what's left of my Masters of Universe Classics figures. I stopped buying these some time ago just because I just couldn't keep up. But I kept some of the ones that I really liked and really wanted to hold on to. So that's what remains of my collection of Masters of the Universe Classics. It's still a great line. I still give it all the props in the world. But I had to move on. Some of my Toy Biz, DC Superheroes, and Batman, the first Batman movie figures from the, the, the Batmobile and the, the Batplane. I love those. Down below that, original vintage RoboForce figures. Most of these are complete with all their weapons. I'm missing weapons for a couple of them, and my my Max Steel has seen better days. But there's the the Robo Force, the new Glios compatible Robo Force Max Zero sitting down there. It's pretty cool. Down below that, I've got a selection of Spawn figures that I bought at an auction a while back. Uh, Dave Draper and I went to an auction. They had a ton of Spawn figures. We bought pretty much all the Spawn figures they had for really cheap, and then I sorted through them and kept the coolest figures that I liked. There are a number of designs and characters that I really liked and really thought they stood out. So I kept the cool ones, and the rest of them are still sitting in my garage and in their packages, just sitting there waiting to be taken to a upcoming Toy Man or taken to King County. But there are some really great figures. The movie figures are some of my favorites and some of the larger scale Malbolgias. I love uh, the old Spawn line. It's really cool. 
Next shelf over starting at the top are all my GoBots lines. So I've got both the play sets, the command center, thruster. I've got both the power suits and the ships all complete and loose. Uh, my awesome Arco, GoBots cap gun, Monstrous there who's still missing an arm and a leg. A lot of loose and complete GoBots there. My Puzzler who's complete. The Space Hawk, I love that little transforming vehicle. It's such a great vehicle. GoBots is a line that nobody really loves that much. And of course, people really don't really love is Rock Lords. But man, I love Rock Lords. Uh, all of my figures there except for Stoneheart have their weapons. And I have the weapon for Pulverize right there. But I'm missing Pulverize, so... The only couple of pieces of Starrier's uh, toy line that I have, and those are loose and complete uh, from the, the play set. I, I love Starriers. I wish I had more of them, but they're kind of hard to come by. And of course, all of the Series 1 Power Lords figures, uh, not only the, the Four Horsemen ones there in the front, the Glyos compatible, but the original uh, Ravel Power Lords figures, all loose and complete, uh, all with their weapons and everything. A really great line, the vehicles. Uh, and of course, I've got Drench from Series 2, but I don't have his weapon or any of his accessories. But they're still a cool line, and I'm really happy to have what I have. Down below that are Bucky O'Hare and the Toad Wars figures. Uh, I'm missing a couple of accessories. I think I'm missing uh, Willie DeWitt's eyeglasses, and I'm missing the gun to Toad Borg and the gun to Bucky. But everything else there is complete. Down below that is my wrestling section. I've got a lot of wrestlers from a lot of the old uh, Jack Specific and some of the newer Mattel stuff there. Uh, some old LJN wrestlers, a couple of TNA figures. That wrestler right there in the green with the black hat and the British flag, that's actually my wrestling persona, being Westlake the uh, Third. That was sculpted uh, and done for me by my buddy Pixel Dan Erdley years and years ago. My Fatal 4-Way playset, which Bubba and uh, Edge there, who's laying down, they don't stand up very well anymore. And every time I stand, I'm going to come downstairs and they're falling over. So I just leave them like that now because it's not worth the hassle. And then, of course, my Hasbro WWF line, which was such a great, great fun line in the late 80s through the 90s. Lots of great characters and lots of great action features on those characters and a lot of fun. Down below them are all the uh, awesome, the, the all of my Robotech and my Legions of Power uh, I love, 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 love these lines. Lots of, lots of playability, lots of construction, lots of different modes you can put them in. Great stuff. The next shelf over is all Transformers. So the top, I have a lot of my large Transformer items. Skylinks, the, the awesome Transformers Command Center playset there. Uh, my reissue Fortress Maximus, uh, Brave Fort Max from years and years ago. My masterpiece figures that I own. The, the very large transforming movie Bumblebee that I thought was always one of the coolest things they released from the movie line. Uh, my Jumbo Transformers Collector Case, which has got some great artwork inside and out. And then my Vintage Transformers. I've got a lot of Vintage Transformers, a lot of G1 stuff. Um, most of that, pretty much everything's G1 and some like random figures in there. All of my movie stuff. I do like a lot of the designs for the movie figures, even though people kind of kind of crap on it a lot. I, I really like some of the, the movie designs, uh, as well as uh, Transformers Prime and a lot of the Transformers Generation stuff that I've managed to pick up. There's Springer. I love Springer back there. It's one of my favorite Generations figures. Shelf below that is all my, uh, my Transformers alternators and a couple of random Transformers that have kind of fallen off of their shelves and got a new home. One of the, the smaller carrying cases, I've got another G1 vintage Optimus down there who's complete and loose and it's just, I wanted one in his cab form so I got an extra one, but the alternators line is a great line that I still need to find some figures for. And then down below that are all the, all the, the random Transformers line from the past 15 years or so, whether it's Beast Wars and Beast Machines or, uh, you know, the War for Cybertron, all those different lines and figures, uh, you know, that have come out of the last 15 years are down there. That's kind of their home. And uh, I like some of them. The ones that I have, I really like the designs of some of them, but some of them are really kooky with action features and such. But what do you do? Moving into my office, which I'll show you this, is my Little Mermaid collection. People have asked to see this uh, kind of in depth. And my Little Mer Mermaid collection has been years and years and years and years of finding it. This Little Mermaid standing was from my, when I worked at the video store. I snatched that because we never used it. And it sat in my closet forever until I put it together when we moved into this new house. A number of Little Mermaid dolls. My Little Mermaid golden toy set, which is one of my prize collectibles. My talking Tycho Little Mermaid, who still works. She still works. Uh, my Deluxe Ursula, which is one of the coolest dolls that, that was released in that line. Um, some more random Little Mermaid things. So a whole set of Dixie Cups from when the Little Mermaid came out in theaters. I still have a whole collection of Dixie Cups. Some random things. The, the movie theater promotions guide. Uh, some really cool video guide there. 
the paper dolls and my Little Mermaid Punch-Out play set. A picture of me and Ariel from Disney World from years ago. My Little Mermaid comic, Patrick Sinatra, just sent me this. Actually, the That New Toy Smell thing was, anyone that's a fan of That New Toy Smell will remember the original opening we were chasing after a golden figure. During the filming of that, the figure broke into tons of pieces, and for Christmas that year, Dan actually made us those little keepsakes, and I still keep it on my wall because it's a great, great keepsake. Some more Little Mermaid stuff. My Little Mermaid snow globe, and I've got a lot of just random aerial stuff that I've found through garage sales and flea markets over the years that I keep buying and I keep having to move stuff around because I'm running out of room. This Little Mermaid colored uh, board back there, I actually colored all myself. That's, that's, uh, that's yours truly coloring that big thing there. My Build-A-Bear Workshop Ariel that was uh, given to me by, by Pop Culture Network's Dirts. Uh, his son, Philip, gave that to me for my birthday one year. Little Mermaid lunchbox and thermos back there. Some of the Little Mermaid beanies, which are actually kind of scary, but they're Little Mermaid, so I, I have to own them. Happy Meal box from the Little Mermaid reissue stuff from, uh, I think, 97, 98, somewhere around there. And then, of course, this was the reissue Little Mermaid poster. This poster uh, still is currently about, uh, it runs about a few hundred dollars. And I had a friend who dealt in movie posters who was able to get me one for a relatively uh, affordable amount. Moving outside is my uh, my licensed Hot Wheels cars. I don't collect a lot of Hot Wheels stuff, but I every time they release a new licensed one, whether it's Muppets or a new Batmobile or Jetsons or the Flintstones mobile or Back to the Future or the DeLorean and stuff like that, I try to find and pick up because I, I do like the licensed stuff because it, it, it does go well with my collection. Next to that is some of the Johnny Lightning stuff, the, the DeLorean and Doc Brown's van from the, the movie with some minifigures, my Buffy vehicles from the, the line. And of course we've got some of the, the, the Masters of the Universe, the 4x4 Monster Jam truck, and some of the newer Master stuff they did a couple years ago. And of course Matchbox's Parasites figures, which were robots and cars together, the robots transformed and fit inside the cars a quirky quirky little line up on top of all that is my NECA Ghostbuster stuff from the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man to Slimer and Gozer and uh, the Demon Dogs there some, some of the best stuff NECA released in their early days all of my Brave Star stuff now I have everything boxed and loose except for a couple pieces um, there's a, a Brave Star 3032 pack I'm missing and I'm missing one version of the playset but I have all of the, the, the you know, all the figures boxed and everything as well loose and complete. Strato Coach, which is one of the coolest vehicles I think has ever been made for a toy line. It's so much fun. And then, of course, down here is my Fort Carrium complete with my complete Laser Fire Brave Star and my 3030 um, there. Just some great figures. Of course, I've got some great artwork hanging up on the walls here. My Spanish uh, lobby card for He-Man, She-Ra, Secret of the Sword. One of the prints from uh, last year's PowerCon. These Captain Power figures are actually signed by the, uh, the, the remaining surviving cast of the original Captain Power and the Soldiers of the Future show, which is pretty cool. And of course, I've got a, a framed, sealed My Little Pony the Movie soundtrack on LP. As well as one of the collector picture discs for Strawberry Shortcake. And then next to it are a couple of swords, and uh, the New Adventures He-Man sword, the 2000X He-Man sword, the original vintage Thundercats play sword, and the new sort of omens from the uh, Bandai Thundercats stuff, as well as a Fats Flyer from Shoba's Pizza. And then of course a King's Island, Ohio, with the Hanna-Barbera Land characters on it. And then all my Masters of the Universe... Uh, of course, some of the some of the, the 
the classic reissue master stuff, which is great. Rainbow Bright Shelf. I've got a lot of Rainbow Bright stuff, uh, a large collection of it that I've uh, that I found over the years, from the box murky to some of the great vintage stuff. My Anastasia stuff from that movie from 20th Century Fox's Anastasia, which is one of my favorite animated movies. And of course, there's Lurky, kind of hanging out over there because he didn't have a home. Some popples. And this debt's off, as I open it here. It's kind of stuck. It's old debt off. There we go. This is just a, a random assortment of vintage 70s and 80s toys from Starbucks Shortcake to some Wuzzles and Gummy Bears, Wind Up Miss Pac Man and Ghost, Gremlins, Shirt Tails, Smurfs, Thundercats, some bagged Star Wars, vintage Star Wars figures there, a Boglin, some more Strawberry Shortcake items. Hug a bunch, get along gang, shirt tails, popples. My one of two boxed Care Bears, Granny Bear, and my Showbiz Pizza Place uh, figures there that I've got. And then my second one, my Braveheart Lion, and my stuffed Gizmo from when I was a kid. Some popples, some back, some some Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure cereal premiums. Love this stuff. And then of course you get up here to the the weird stuff. You've got the the awesome little Kinder Discovery Time stuff, including uh, Milky the Magical Milking Cow and my Superpowers Cup sets. And then moving down, you start into our Happy Meal toys, McDonald's. A lot of the transforming Happy Meal sets and fast food premiums over the years. And the next shelf over the top one is all is Casper, the Friendly Ghost from Pizza Hut, the Little Puppets, and then Jungle Book 2 sets from McDonald's, which are huge. It's a huge, huge set. And then we've got a bunch, like this whole section right here is all Disney stuff from Tarzan to Tailspin to uh, Buzz Lightyear and Space Command to Goof Troop. And then we've got a, a, a good chunk of the Disney 100 Years of Magic uh, little figure sets that came from McDonald's, as well as a number of other uh, fast food premiums that focus on Disney. When you really start doing the research and looking at it, there's so many Disney premiums that have been brought out by fast food restaurants over the years that, I mean, we literally, we have this whole bookshelf full of all of this Disney stuff, and we still have a ton of Disney stuff that we just can't fit that's going to need another bookshelf. That's how much Disney stuff has been made over the years by fast food restaurants for these fast food premiums. It's, it's mind-boggling to think about it. Next to it, we have a little, uh, in an old shelf full of some random larger stuffed animals that are just kind of uh, crammed in there for now until we get a better display section for them. The Muppet Shelf has some of my favorite stuff in it. And then the top shelf has some great uh, classic Fisher Price Muppet puppet figures that were brought out and my two vintage Donkey Kongs and of course this my one of my favorite the ceramic uh, get along gang bank which is pretty cool and the next shelf over we've got uh, the Lion King toys that were out in the play set as well as some more large-scale uh, fast food premiums Ice Age Chicken Run and then we get into like the cartoons the Hanna-Barbera stuff Smurfs Scooby-Doo Flintstones down below that, a lot of uh, randomness, Muppets, Muppet Babies, Muppet Treasure Island, Berenstain Bears, Archie, Alvin and the Chipmunks. Below that, you've got a lot more animated stuff, Looney Tunes, Tiny Tunes, Peanuts, Alf, Space Jam, a lot of, a lot of cool stuff. And then below that, you get into mostly a shelf full of Simpsons, but there's the whole line of Back to the Future stuff, as well as Ren and Stimpy, Capital Critters. And then on the last shelf down there, you've got Land Before Time and small, a complete line of small soldiers. A lot of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle stuff from Burger King from over the years. Rugrats. 
and then ending the room and ending the tour on our laundry room, Carrie and I have figured out a good way to display all of our smaller plushes with these cool little over the door shoe hangers. So this is one way that we kind of have been able to display all of our little beanies and all of our little plush collectibles. A very cool, uh, very neat idea. And Carrie found that on Pinterest. So very, very good way to display all of these. And you're able to see them all, even though they're crammed together in some places, you are able to see everyone that's there. There you go, gang. A guided tour of the toy room down here. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed the look, and uh, hope you enjoyed to hear me, uh, you know, just basically spouting off about every toy shelf that I had. So, uh, thank you for being fans and viewers of Toy World Order. Thank you for making this site and everything we do a success over the last few years. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. I say thank you, thank you, thank you. I cannot thank you enough. So, gang, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the new year. We've got lots of great stuff coming. So, and. Since I'm stealing a page out of my Buddy Pixel Dan's book for doing this walkthrough on Christmas Day, which is something Dan has made a tradition of, um, I say we'll come back together this time next year on Christmas Day, and I'll show you even more of what has grown in the year. So until then, gang, take care, and we'll see you next year.